thing to be done that is a little shady, it's Bob. And Bob happily sends us the results because we have a good relationship with Bob. So what if Bob were to scan the internet and look for, I don't know, devices open on port 80? And what if Bob were to use Google and find the most popular ISPs that provide cable modem routers to users, like Time Warner, um, like uh, Comcast Roadrunner, and then use Aaron to discover the IP address ranges that are assigned to those ISPs that are being used by their subscribers. Bob did all this, of course. Um, then use Nmap to discover all of the devices that have been opened on port 80 and identify the service listening. So grab the banner, tell me that it's an HTTP server, and do a service discovery. I actually used the light service discovery. I'll show you the command um, that Bob used and, uh, and show you how that uh, light service discovery helped go quicker. Then manually poke through the results and find interesting stuff, trends, things for observation. Uh, Shodan was very handy too. Now Shodan is a catalog of services on the internet. So I believe that the Shodan author is doing the very same thing that Bob is doing, going out scanning the internet, except Shodan is storing them in a database, providing you with a website to go query the results. And um, I, uh, Bob used Shodan to geographically locate specific routers, for example. So say there was a Zixil uh, or a Huawei router uh, I think that's how you pronounce that, that had, that you knew had some, what is it? Huawei. Huawei, thank you. A Huawei router that had some specific vulnerabilities um, that you might want to target. Well, you might want to find out which ISPs maybe deployed 14 million of those devices. Well, Shodan is a good indicator because it's going to tell you which countries. Now, my plot for world domination, I want to be able to, you know, take it slow. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew and compromise a country at a time. You know, Colombia was an attractive carb target. They've got good coffee, goes good with giant cigars, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, find um, the who is lookup. So I, I do this search here, look for Huawei routers. Uh, Colombia has got a bunch of them. Here's one of the IP addresses. I do a who is lookup on it. The who is lookup returns comprehensive results of all the IP addresses that could be assigned to that ISP, and then scan that ISP to get a full complete listing, because Shodan's not complete, of all of the vulnerable routers assigned to that ISP in Colombia. So it's kind of like geographic embedded device hacking targeting. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it. So, then you start to go in and say, well, so I found all these routers. Well, what happens if I just open a web browser and browse to one of these routers' external IP addresses? I mean, certainly the ISP should block port 80 and prevent this from happening and prevent the entire internet from managing your routers, whether it belongs to you or the ISP. But fortunately for us in our uh, quest for world domination, that's not true. They let you browse to the port and they let you log in. And they let you log in sometimes without a password, which I'll show you. Sometimes it requires a default password. And you can do things like change someone's DNS servers. So what can you do if you can change the DNS servers that someone is using? Yeah, well, Bob, thank you, Tim, could control their internets in a very big way. I mean, you control where they go. If they go to their bank, they're not going to their bank. They're coming to my server, which looks like their bank, and I'm getting all of their account information. So now we've got money. Yay, we can buy armies and cigars. So uh, here's some more D-Link router fails. So it's not just the ones that are provided by the uh, ISP, but they're also regular D-Link routers that someone sets up, wide open to the internet. Again, we have the DNS server uh, changing problem as well. This one is a Netgear router, which again lets you change the uh, DNS servers as well. This was a username of admin and a password of password. Now finding the default passwords were all, I mean it wasn't as easy as just knowing one or two. I mean you probably had to know about a dozen different combinations and it could vary by ISP as to which default passwords were available um, and assigned maybe by the ISP. Um, a lot of people leave the defaults as well and that's an example of that. And it has global reach. This is a Belkin ADSL modem router that is distributed by the ISP in Australia. And this one here actually gives me the, the email address of the user um, and lets me um, you know, see their settings and their IP address and uh, things like that. 
This one required, and I forget where, where this one was, some uh, foreign Turkey, I believe it was Turkey, thank you, uh, a Turkish ISP. This one required no password, no password. Just browse to the web interface of your ADSL cable modem router and I can change all of the settings without a password. And that's the level of security being implemented by ISPs that are managing these cable modems, like similar to Time Warner having the 14 million. This is so easy that Nicole Ritchie can do it. Did anyone see this story? Nicole Ritchie actually socially engineered some of her friend's Twitter accounts and started making tweets of them. And um, some of these hacks don't even require social engineering. It doesn't even require a password. It's so easy, even Nicole Ritchie could do it. Now my rumor is that she's gonna attend DEF CON and talk about and give a presentation about hacking Twitter. I'm just kidding. So, this one, well, I thought was interesting. This one's trying to fool you. So it doesn't just log you in when you browse to it. It actually gives you a, lo a password prompt with a password already filled in. And if you click log in, it logs you right into the router. Password's already there. I'm like, that's awesome. Thank you so much. You're making my job of taking over the world so much easier. Uh, so no social engineering required for that one. Uh, this was yet a different ISP. This one was in Kuwait. And again, default configurations being applied to all of the different subscribers. This one was the password was, username was support and the password was support. A little bit of Google searching, you can find that very, very easily, what the default password is being set for these various ISPs in the different countries. Um, so this gets scary. As I said, you can target uh, countries, you can change DNS servers. Um, you can uh, potentially, the really scary one, now changing DNS servers is handy. The really scary one is what if I can develop some custom firmware that I can upload to the router. That firmware presents the same user interface as the user or uh, uh, ISP is used to managing. But under the covers, this firmware is just grabbing all of your traffic. It's grabbing all of your passwords. It's redirecting your traffic to malicious places. Um, so this is really the ultimate hack that I'm looking for. The problem is trying to get this in a uh, ubiquitous environment is very difficult. All of these routers have different platforms, which right now is working for them in terms of security because there's not one unified platform that I can create one firmware in order to upload. Um, so that's one of the attacks that we're working on. So a few weeks ago, I was setting up my brand new wet 610N made by Cisco Linksys. And this was a gaming adapter, so it's Ethernet on one side and 802.11n, you know, the new N where you can get 300 megabits a second over the wireless on a device that has a 100 megabit Ethernet port. I thought that was interesting. Uh, so I thought, well, you know, I'm going to have to cancel my presentation at source. I thought all was lost. Someone must have been listening to me when I preached on my podcast for so long and still do that manufacturers need to make the user change the default password. And this device did. It said, you have to enter a new password. So the first password I tried was admin. It said, no, no, no. You have to enter a, a different password than the one that's there. I said... Someone's been listening. It's a gift from the gods. This is fantastic. They're forcing users to change passwords. Well, like, I can go play golf now. Like, I'm done. Um, however, I got to the next screen. It said, below other settings for your wireless bridge, Linksys highly recommends that you print your settings or write them down. Great advice, Cisco Linksys. Then there was a checkbox to save these settings in a text file on your desktop in clear text. Epic fail. So while that is better than just leaving the default or not making the user change it, there's obviously still some education that we have to do with these vendors to make them realize that this is not security. It's better than what you had before, but not what we're looking for. So now let's go on to finding some of these devices. Um, as I found, or Bob told me, uh, he found that scanning the internet is a very time consuming process. And um, it, you know, when you're limiting to one port, 
uh, it's not so bad. It's still kind of time consuming. And here uh, is the, uh, if anyone wants to go scan a very large network with permission, not the internet, uh, please, and wants to go 